open up to Revelation chapter 14. And when you get there, close your Bible over your hand on Revelation 14, because you're going to hold on to that, and turn to do, 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 Romans chapter 1. We're going to read through this real fast, probably skipping all over the place. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. That which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. Because since the creation of the world is invisible attributes, his eternal power, divine nature being clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they're without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks or give thanks or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened, professing to be wise, they became fools, exchanged the recognition of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them, for they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to grating passions, for their women exchanged the natural function of that which is unnatural. In the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman, burned in their desire toward one another, men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own person the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind, etc., now, I bring that up. Most of you uh, hanging around know exactly where we're going with that. You just were read what the wrath of God is. And the wrath of God is not, boy, he throws you and you go burn forever in hell. Okay? The wrath of God is, is exactly what we just read. The wrath of God, so that you'll get it, and, and I'm setting something up that we can look at. The wrath of God is is that he goes, he looks at you. Remember, I, I often say, God's not in the rescue business, he's in the redemption business. There are times he does a rescue, but when we get over into that, it ain't going to be rescue. We go, oh God, oh God, God, look at me, God, God, he'll rescue. No, God's not going to. If you keep on going in a particular direction, he is going to, that scripture in, in Psalm 1, blessed is the man who does not stand in the way of sinners. I've said it before, first time I said it, the look of shock on people's face, you could just tell they were, oh, what a mean person. I, don't stand in the way of sinners. When a sinner's coming along, get out of his way and go, go ahead. Oh my goodness, I mean, I thought people were going to stone me for saying that. It was up at Indy somewhere. And they were just so shocked. And I went, but that's the wrath of God. The wrath of God is, you want to be perverse? Go ahead. You want to be sick and, 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 and give yourself over lustfully to members of your own gender, which now it's difficult without a gender field guide, but <laughs> fine, go ahead. You want to give yourself over to all these, these terrible things, and God, the wrath of God is, we just read it, the wrath of God is revealed. This is what happens. And when you, that's the direction you go, your mind is going, the wrath of God is revealed. What does he do? Go ahead. Go on. The hope is eventually you will go, I'm sick of me. I, but honestly, what we're seeing here, remember where Paul says, I turn over such a one to the destruction, so he has the destruction of his flesh that he may be saved. What's God doing? God, when he is going, go ahead, is turning that person over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that while he may mess up through life, he may eventually go, I'm sick of me. Exactly the same thing. That's the wrath of God. Okay? You, you just need to get it. So the wrath of God. Now, with that in mind, turn to Revelation, please. Chapter 14, where you had your hand. And we'll start with... Um, now, again, get it out of your mind. Get it out of your mind. And, and it's, it's, it's hard. 
Revelation is all about the future. No, it's not. And we're going, if, if, you, if you were just to read, if I were to pluck these verses out and say, okay, we're going to read these outside of the book of Revelation. And of course, the context that we've been told is the book of Revelation is all about the future. So whenever you're reading, it's all about the future, which is ridiculous. But either way, it's all about the future. Let's play like what we're about to read is not about the future and that maybe God is talking about life now, your life now. The description we're about to look at right now is going to be right now because he's going to say, and I saw an angel and that angel ain't necessarily in the future. It doesn't say, and I saw this angel way out in the future. It saw an, I saw an angel and he's doing things on the earth. And so we're going to look at an angel doing things on the earth that is not necessarily talking about the future. Is it in the future? It is. But it's also right now. And it's been going around just like the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not this eternal torment. The wrath of God is, you want to be crazy? Go ahead. Revelation chapter 14. We'll start in verse 6. And I saw another messenger, an angel, flying in mid-heaven, having an eternal good news to preach to those who live on the earth and every nation and tribe and tongue and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him recognition, give him glory. Why? Because the hour of his judgment has come. Okay, stop a second. Class. Class. When will be the hour of God's judgment? Or when is the hour of God's judgment? Or when was the hour of God's judgment? On the cross. You've been hanging with the wrong people. <laughs> it's on the cross. God, as I heard a preacher one time say, you know, God got his revenge on the cross. Hello? I mean, it, it's exactly right. Um, guess, who, guess who didn't fall... Uh, uh, hang on a second, I need to get this off of here. Um, and turn this off. If I can. Tyler, turn this thing off. Never mind, I got it. Okay. <laughs> God got even on the cross. And we know what the wrath of God is. So we've been talking about that. Now, <clears throat> we have an angel in heaven, mid heaven, and he's telling people, fear God, give him glory. The hour of his judgment has come. The judgment has already happened. Worship him. So that hour, Okay, has come. I'm not saying that there's not future judgments. I'm not saying that. But the judgment against us, the judgment against you, you died on the cross. Okay? And, that, that, and, and so that's what happened. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and springs of water. Another angel, a second one, followed saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. Now I want to stop a second here and say something. That doesn't mean that fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great in the future. We read it that way. Oh, okay, well, in, in, in the future, Babylon the Great, which is Jerusalem and the, the not just Jerusalem, but the, the, uh, the, the, the world's system. And if we look in, in Scripture here, we'll, we would see that. But I'm not going to go into it right now. <clears throat> He's making a statement of fact, not a statement of things that are going to be in the future. Do you understand? The statement of fact is the world has fallen. The world system is fallen. Babylon the Great has fallen. When did it fall? Garden of Eden? Uh-huh. It's not, we're not talking about the future here. It's, he's making a statement of fact. You need to get out of the system that's in there. The cosmos has fallen. It's a fallen thing. And when you're in it, this is what, what's he doing? He's preaching the good news. He's preaching the gospel. Run, get away from it. The, 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 the system has fallen. It's a fallen system. It's false. She who has made all the nations drink of the wine and the passion of her immortality. Then another angel, a third one, followed him saying with a loud voice, 
If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives the mark of his for, mark on his forehead, the mark uh, on the forehead, we know the word forehead, a better translation is what? Countenance. countenance. The countenance. Mark on the countenance. And when, you, when, you, when you're around people that are lost, guess what you can see? When you're around people that really know the Lord, guess what you can see? Uh, when you're around people that are demonized, if you're watching closely enough, you'll see it flicker across their face. You go, whoa, look at that. It, 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 guess who I've been talking to? You know, I mean, it's in there. You see it. You, if you watch paying attention at all, you'll see it. He also will drink of the wine of the what? The wrath of God. What's the, what's the wrath of God? Okay, look. Whoever worships the beast in his image and does not receive that, that, that look of, on the, on the uh, countenance of I'm lost is going to be drinking the wine of the wrath of God. What's going on? Folks, we look at the, the wrath, even where it's describing these things, it's talking about the more and more and more perverse. And the people that you know that are caught up in these things, that are caught up in, in drugs, that are caught, caught up in pornography, that are caught up in um, deviant lifestyles, all of this stuff, they are as miserable as they can be. They're sad and they're sick and they're all, every one of them is unhappy. They're unhappy. Um, and anyway, and, and all they're doing is, is spending their time griping about how terrible life is. Why? They're, they're, they're dealing with the wrath of God. God's going, you, but you wanted it. And when you get miserable enough, come over and find me. Which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger. And he, he, not God, but he is the, the people that are, are, have the image of the beast, etc., he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. Now, I want to stop a second. Does this mean in fire and brimstone? And I, I, I mean, I, I personally think that this is uh, <clears throat> simply a picture of the type of torment. And we could go back and we assure you we will, just not now. Go back into Scripture and you look at the torment uh, Jesus, in, in talking specifically about unforgiveness, you will be turned over to the tormentors. The tormentors. And I'm telling you, when you don't forgive, when you have bitterness and anger and unforgiveness in your heart, it's fire and brimstone. You're, you're on fire. You're burning. It's, it's, it's awful. And now I want you to notice something. In the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Okay, I've got a question. We are gathered today, right now, all of us, are here in whose name? In Jesus' name. So we're in the presence of the Lamb. How many of you, I know it's scary to think about, believe we're also in the presence of His holy angels? Well, yeah, they're around. We're surrounded by them. We know that. Um, <clears throat> what I'm saying is, is this is not talking about somewhere out in the future. You can look all day long, but it's, it's talking about the torment is in this life. At verse 11, oh wait, see, they're burning up the smoke of their torment. And this, I, I had somebody, an Imire, that just looked at, wait a second, it says, the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. This is in verse 11. It goes up forever and ever. And so that proves that they are burning forever and ever in fire, doesn't it? But it's not so. When you see smoke coming up, smoke, what does it tell you? It tells you that something is burning or has been burned. Do you understand? The smoke is simply the, pre the it is the evidence that not something is burning because the smoke, I mean, you can put out a fire and guess what keeps on is, is up there in the atmosphere. Up there in the, and around you. It's the smoke. It, it, the smoke is the evidence that something is below is burning. Okay? It's not the evidence of something that is, the, in other words, the fire's not following the smoke up. The smoke is evidence that something burned down there. And the, their tor the smoke can be there forever even if the person is dead. But the smoke of that torment that they bur were burning, 
Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't use that verse to go, okay, they're living forever and being burned forever is what I'm saying, because it doesn't say it. It says the smoke of, the, of their torment, and they have no rest day and night. Is this a picture of the wrath of God that we read in Romans 1? Is this a picture of the wrath of God? It sure is. It's loudly a picture of the wrath of God. Those who worship the beast, it didn't say those who have worshiped, it's those who worship the beast, his image, whoever received the mark of his name. Um, we're going to have to stop because it's, uh, we're, we've run out of time. But uh, Ms. Davis, do you have anything to, to add in there? We will come back and, and do more with this later on because we're, we're, honestly, what we've done is the introduction. We can go and look at some scriptures later on now and you can see that, wait a second, it, where we see the word hell and it will fit very well with the word Gehenna, the valley of Henna, thrown into the garbage heap rather than, okay, I have to make it that it's a lake of fire. Um, we do have to stop, but anybody have anything they really desperately need to bring up? Yes. Um, yeah, something that keeps coming to mind, um, the, the world's view of like the gospel is, you know, you, you repent, you know, once saved, and then, which now means you're going to be out of hell, um, and it's usually, and, and you'll go to heaven and have a mansion, but um, <clears throat> usually it's like, if you don't repent, you're going to hell and burn forever, you know? And just thinking about it, like, that's manipulation. Um, and to know God and to know his character, like, that's not who God is. And, like, fear and love doesn't have anything to do with each other, you know, because fear has to do with tor um, punishment. Um, so to think about that, like, if like the, you're preaching the gospel to get out of hell um, and there's fear there, then that's not God. But there is the fear from the Lord that, like, if you don't turn, yes, like that, you know, you will die. <clears throat> um, and, you know, we cast them up the paper fire. But, like, um, but that, I don't know, like, what I'm trying to say is, like, to know God, like, you can be at peace and know that, um, like, that, like, what the world preaches, like, that's just... Um, proving the point of, like, that's not God, you know, because that he's not, like, manipulative like that. Yeah. Um, and again, it's, it's fine. I find it interesting. The world doesn't demand, I mean, some of them do. They don't demand that um, <clears throat> there isn't a God. So many of them, I think, believe there is. They don't know about it. But it behooves us... <coughs> To, to have the truth. Um, it behooves us to, and especially when we're talking about our Father. Um, anyway, it's, it's, these, these things are, are important. There's reasons for them. So thank you. Anyone else? Nothing what Esther is saying. <clears throat> we preach the, it's the, the cart before the horse kind of thing. We preach the end before the beginning. And it's, I was looking at the verse, Hebrews 2, 3. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. And just um, to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. Well, why? This is the love of God manifested is that he came and died to redeem man and to bring us back into union with him. But if we start with the, the end of the story and don't tell the beginning, then we, there's, you know, it, it doesn't tell us what God's done for us to redeem us. And yes, the end result is, um, is terrifying, you know. But it's got because God's provided such a salvation for mankind, and He's calling to mankind out of that and saying, Turn to me, look what I've provided. I often lately have thought of the verse, you know, what love, I'm not going to quote it exactly right, but that God, we should be called the sons of God. What that, it's in, is it First John? Yeah, that we would be called the children of God. 
well, we don't have that full counsel that we share with people. This is what God's done. And so um, the, it's hard for people, you know, but it, we need to know and be able to communicate that it's only by the Spirit of God. You know, we can't, we can't save anyone. We can't convince them, but it's by the Spirit. If those who speak, speak as God speaking, the oracles of God. But to tell, this is what God's done in sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We preach Jesus Christ in him crucified. And, um, and to those that receive it, it's the power of God comes in into their life. They experience okay. what God has done firsthand. And, um, but anyway, it's, we need to be, know him, abide in, in the truth. So we'll be ready be like the, the verse that says um, about be ready to give an answer to those who ask for the hope that is in you. You know, separate yourself or sanctify Christ as Lord in our heart. That's the first step. And be ready to give an answer to those who ask for the hope that is in us, which there should be hope in us if we've received the truth, uh, the truth of the gospel, you know. And so, anyway, that's all. Just See, it's it's ahead. not it's not this. I've been taken out of hell. Um, <clears throat> did not God choose the poor of this world to be rich in faith and become heirs of the kingdom? This is one of the places what that He has promised to those who do what love Him. That's what the kingdom is. Okay, and. You need, you need to say the magic words so you don't go to hell. Okay, here's the magic words. Great. Okay, you're not going to hell. Is that loving God? Who's that loving? Me. So I'll think of it. I just don't want to go to hell. And so we go, okay, well, great. That was good enough. What an idiotic, inconsistent, stupid, mean, hideous description of a loving God. Believe whatever the Gehenna you want to believe, but, um, you know, at least be able to back it up biblically, and you can't. You cannot. It was funny. Uh, at, the, at the end of Mr. Fudge's book, I read it after I'd already come to the conclusions that what we've been talking about today, <clears throat> biblically. And he, he had the same thing happen to him. He, he went and he researched uh, this guy had said, I want you to research it. He researched it from one end to the other. And, and he, in his books, he's written at least two or three. Uh, I think he may be dead now. But he, he wrote these books about this. And at the end of the, the one that I read, I only read one of them. And uh, at the end of it, and he said, oh, and by, at the, he goes through all this stuff. Uh, by the way, back to the question on what I believe about hell. Um, I believe it. I believe now more than I ever did. Now, I don't know exactly how he said it, but it doesn't mean that he believed all the garbage. He now believes the truth about what God is saying about, about punishment and the end of life and, and, and that's given. He believes, actually, and he believes it more than he ever did. Okay? Uh, does he believe in the lake of fire? Absolutely. So he believes in it more than he ever used to. He believes in it more so, but just not the way that Everybody has taken and plugged these things in and said, here, here it is. 